was 11.28, doing some work. I kind of jumped the gun here. I wasn't going to record this because I had a million things going on, but I think this is probably a good one to record because uh, we're going to be doing some few little extra things to this one. I'm going to have to go through and uh, get you up to speed with what I had to go through to get to this stage. This thing is a pain in the ass. I've worked on a lot of Arians. I've worked on a lot of snowblowers in general. Arians used to be, in the day, one of the best engineered and best built units there was. I don't know if you guys are seeing that camera glitch out. Something going on with the camera here, again. As you... This one here was a real pain in the ass. Get to this stage. Now, this is something I've never seen on any of the prior models. This used to be my father's unit. He gave it to me recently. He needed a bunch of work, but I think he bought it around 2003, so it's about 17 years old. The stuff older than this, and I think the stuff newer than this isn't built this way, but either way, this goes on here. There's a woodruff key that goes right in here. You can see I had a hell of a time. It now goes on nice, but I, I got a... I gotta buzz off a little bit more of that. But this is what the pulley attaches here with these three bolts. You know, all the other ones, the pulley would attach direct to the shaft and have a set screw or something. Or well, there'd be some other way of doing it, but not this hub. Yeah, this has a set screw too, two of them. But it took me probably an hour and a half of beating and heating this thing to get it off. Total nightmare. I've never had to deal with this before. And this is another piss poor design. I don't think this Impella will ever come off of here with these two set screws. I don't think there's a chance in hell that this thing's going to move. So they kind of dropped the ball there. Either way, I got some new bushings that we're going to put on. I just put them there so I can find everything because as you can see, I got a million things going on here. So there's that. What are some of the other problems I had with this? Just trying to get the unit separated was a pain. A little different design that I'm not used to here. Normally, it's it's pretty easy. You just tilt it back and lift the front part off. This was all hung up and stuck. and I don't know. It, they just don't build stuff like they used to, you know? But either way, this belt's actually... Yeah, none of these belts are in real bad shape, but we're going to go ahead and change them all anyways. So getting a new drive belt. We got a new bearing. Here's, here's the bearing plate that we took apart. See the inner, the plate that goes on the inside has uh, studs on it, so it goes in from that way. So you gotta pull the whole assembly apart. It's really not that big of a deal. Pretty easy. I think I threaded those back in with my fingers there just so that they wouldn't disappear. But once you get these off, three nuts. And this comes apart the same way as the other one. So now I can uh, beat that bushing out of there and press the new ones in there. Anyways, that's that. And what we're going to do, see I got a mud flap here, so I'm going to do that modification that everybody's been doing. I think I'm going to drill through here, being that it's just a nice, easy place to get to. It might kind of suck the rubber in a little bit and get it to bend. I don't know if I'm keen on that, but you got this brace right here, so we can't really... If I drill through here, there isn't going to be a lot of metal for strength, whereas this this whole thing is super strong. I think that I think I'm going to put it there just because it seems to be the place to put it. And uh, that way the rubber is just going to fold back anyways as it rotates around. And that'll buy me a couple extra feet of distance shooting the snow, which uh, will be nice. Prior to this, I had a Toro 828 power shift. It's a great unit, but this has got three more horsepower and a little bit more width too. Oh, no, same width. I'm going to make use of that power. Because I was working on this Grand Marquis here, I got these uh, bolts from the old upper ball joints that bolt in place, four on each side. So that'll give me two, 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 and two for all four blades. There is four on this, right? Yeah. I thought there might have been five, but no, there's only four blades. So I got enough. I'll just put two. We'll cut up some sections of this. What I might do is maybe cut this. There's raised sections. You know, I, I might want to cut this where it's super thick, but then, you know, then you, I don't know. And then it goes real thin here, but what I was planning on doing was cutting this inner part and then having this thinner part brush up against the inside, you know, that it'll wear itself in. It would be nice if it was all one thickness, but this is the mud flap that I have, so we're going to have to make it work one way or the other. Put the bolts through the thicker part, 
you know, for structural stability. I'll find a cutting device for that. I guess I guess we'll start on that for us. I get the drill over here and start hacking this up. So I figured it to be three and a half inches wide. Okay, procured a stabbing device. Some pretty heavy duty stuff. That's that's good. Will we be able to cut it? <laughs> Alrighty, that's what we got. Not pretty, not straight, but just has to work. Plenty of thickness there. I want to say maybe three eighths of an inch there, maybe even a quarter. Oh, let's measure it. Find out. Quarter inch at the base. The top is uh, three sixteenths, maybe a little less. Some are bigger than others, as you can see. I got one a little taller. That's all gonna wear down. So we got these two. <laughs> Not bad for pretty much eyeballing them with a razor knife. Good enough. I'm happy with that. These come in handy for me for figuring out. Uh, you can tell the bolts are about a quarter of an inch, but it's good to be sure. And they are indeed a quarter of an inch. So yeah, drill two quarter inch holes all the way around. Try to figure out the spacing as I go here. So this is how they're gonna go. Sit right like that. It gives me about an inch, which is probably plenty. I probably only need half of that. Whatever's left over will uh, wear itself down, I guess. I'm gonna drill right in here. I guess we'll leave some space in there for strength, you know, kind of try to evenly space them. I'm not gonna measure that. I'm just gonna eyeball it. So might not be all pretty and fancy and scientific, but it's just a snowblower. It's just gonna throw snow, so. I got some Amsoil off-road synthetic grease. I'm gonna pack it in there on both sides that way. If I ever do any, which I do a lot, is snow blow the street out here because they, the town plows it about wide enough for half of a car, let alone a full-size pickup. Get into the road saw, it'll destroy these things pretty quick. And being that we just breached the impeller there, any salt gets in there, it's gonna start rusting its way out, you know. So I'm gonna pack that full of uh, that off-road grease. That stuff works pretty good. It's meant for uh, yellow equipment that sits outside 24-7, 365. This stuff right here, synthetic polymeric off-road grease. This stuff is so thick. Got a very high tolerance to water washout. And extremely high temperature dropping point, which we will never hit in this thing. This thing's gonna be 32 degrees. <laughs> Three inch extensions disappear around here. I had two of them. Both of them are MIA. So definitely would have been better with bigger washers. I don't have eight washers that big. I ran out. I did at one point, but not today. So, should work pretty good, I think. All right, we're done. I labeled them all. Since I drilled them by eye, they're gonna be different, you know, different widths. So, I want to keep them, at least until they wear out, and then I'll cross that bridge when we get there, but that should work nice. Time to put her together. All right, change the drive belt while we're here. Ah, looks like I gotta pull that off. No, maybe not. Nope, nope. Gotta think a little. Oh seven two one one two. This should be the factory belt from two thousand three. It's not in that bad a shape. I mean, it's you can see it's starting to dry a little bit. What you can see there. This looks a lot thinner. It's a rotary seven four four zero three eighths by thirty five inches. She does look awfully small, width wise especially. Might be just a hair thinner than stock. It's 
It's got a lot of crap on it too for being a brand new belt. Problem with buying stuff on the internet. Made in USA, that's a good thing. Definitely going on a lot easier. No, it seems to fit good. Can be deceiving. I'm bleeding. Reopened an old wound. What else is new? I don't know why I hold on to these, but I do. <laughs> Precious, throw it away. I just gotta get the excess rust off of here with the wire wheel here. Yeah. <laughs> if it works, this thing's kind of a piece of crap. Need to get a Dremel inside here and buzz all this down. I think I'll do that next. You know, how hard would it have been for the factory to put on a little anti-seize or even, even some oil or something, you know? Manufacturing today sucks. Everybody's chasing a dollar. Nobody gives a crap about quality anymore. It's really aggravating. These are the things you gotta deal with. Compared to how that fit before, it's <laughs> just amazing. Went from an 8 thousandths interference fit to maybe a couple thousands clearance. I'm gonna get some ANCs. Do it the right way. So that's a bearing, replacement bearing. 230287. Arian's number is 054. 09300. Of course, it's an oddball size, you know. If they used a the regular 603, I've got a ton of those, or even a 604. But nope, this one is like a hybrid in between the two. It's just slightly different diameters, which sucks. So you have to spend $20 instead of $2. Such is life in the 21st century. You build them so you can't fix them and gotta buy their stuff. So, this is what it is, I guess. Get this thing apart. There we go. <clears throat> bearing just sits right in there. The bearing. Make sure we hold that in. The bearing's gonna sit there. See the mark flat flat part on the bottom. I can make sure I did the same thing on the inside. Yeah, I did. Okay. I should have this tilted up and make life a lot easier. Springs down with LPS3. It's a pretty good uh, rust proofing agent. They use it on aircraft. It's kind of expensive, so like anything aircraft related, but it's a pretty good rust proofing agent. Snug is good. I don't like how that moves around like that. But. So the way they all are. You know, I got an idea for that. I might pack some of that waterproof grease in there. I think I'm gonna do that. Just gonna put a big, thick blob of this crap in here. Sure they charge enough money for these things, you'd think they'd build them with a little more precision, you know? This thing was probably, back in 03, I think it was $1,000, $1,200. It was a, wasn't a cheap unit, you know? It's not a small amount of money. Not to me, anyways. Yeah, tighten it right up. <laughs> now everything will stay put. 
put another layer on here. Mush it all in there. Now keep all the water and salt out of there. Best thing to do if you're doing any kind of roadways with a snowblower where there's road salt. It's just common sense. I mean, you just, you do the road first. For, as soon as you get out there, do the road, do the pile that blocked your driveway in. And then once you've done all that, go do the fresh snow. That'll wash all the salt out of these things. That's why this one's in such great shape for its age. Because that's the way my dad always did it. Yeah, I'll probably pack it in there. Keep that barren from failing in the future. Keep the water out of there. Keep the salt and the grit. Uh, it's not a whole lot of grit, depending on what type of snow you're moving. If you're near the road, there probably is grit. If that's all you got is road to do for a sidewalk where, the, where they use road salt, just find a spot in your yard, virgin snow, and shoot about 100 feet of that, and it'll wash itself out, you know. The best thing to do is get some fresh snow through the snowblower before you park it. Then it'll last you. That road salt destroys everything. Destroys our cars, destroys our equipment, plows, everything. That's that. Back together, get it all packed full of polymeric off-road grease. It's about as protected as you can get it. And it also, as an added bonus, it took up all that slop that was in there. So it'll probably quiet the unit down quite a bit. Okay, now we got the auger flanges here. We're going to drive these uh, bushings out of here. I'm an auto mechanic, so I have all this stuff. You could take a punch probably tap around the outside of this knock it out that way but i got a nice uh, seal driver that'll uh, fit right inside here and part of a cup for a ball joint press we'll use that and, uh, should make short work of this yeah that's that very easy not much to it these don't look like the right ones. Oh, they are. They look different. It's an optical illusion. They looked, they looked ten times bigger than they, than they really are, for some reason. No, oh, they're perfect. Yeah, push it over your fingers. This one looks like it sticks out a little bit more. All right, so I could use the off-road grease in those bushings. But I'll use uh, the uh, synthetic water-resistant grease instead because it's uh, a little bit thinner, even though it's they're both uh, NGLI number two, I believe. Doesn't tell you. This stuff is this stuff is just extreme pressure. You know, it's it's thick. We don't want to make the engine work any harder than it already has to. So <clears throat> that's my reasoning for that. And it's water-resistant, so it'll keep the snow out of there. These are pretty much oil impregnated anyways. Why not give it a fighting chance, you know? Redundancy is good in everything. All right. I'm just going to throw some Manny C's on here before before it gets uh, contaminated with uh, that waterproof grease there. And the stuff won't stick. So. Coat the thing up good. I don't want to have to go through that again. That was a lot of work. Four pound sledgehammer and a half bottle of map gas to get that stupid hub off there. If the factory had just done this to start with, you know, would have made my life a lot easier. But it seems their only concern is selling more units, not making them last. Part of the course, it's the way automobiles are, washing machines, refrigerators, Lawn tractors, everything's that way today. Just sucks. Hopefully something changes. All right. Now I gotta flip this around the correct way. You want the shaft at the top because you can get it backwards. It'll, it'll flip around. Can you see the mistake I made there? <laughs> That was kind of a dumb mistake. You know, this thing's been sitting over here for a week. I forgot how I took them out. I got to reverse those bushings there on the yeah, side. Wrong way, buddy. Don't do what I do. That was pretty stupid. That's the way I threw them on there to keep them from uh, disappearing while it sat over here waiting for parts to come in. So I assume that's the way that they came off, which was wrong. 
from the, the nut marks there. If I had looked closer, I would have noticed. There she goes. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to go. Those don't have to be super tight either. Alrighty. Stop it. Taking these bolts off. Nuts. Grease where it's supposed to be. Yeah, that'll seal it up nice. So there's a brand new $8 keyway with a ripoff. That's $7.54. <clears throat> All because of my mistake. I lost, I went and put the thing down. I was in the middle of doing five things at once as usual. And I set the thing down across the shop and lost it. So I went online, ordered one because I couldn't have this thing apart and in my way for any longer than it already was. Yep, as soon as I ordered it, I found it, found the old one, and uh, they had already shipped it, of course. Always the way. What are you gonna do? I'm just gonna put a little bit of the off-road grease on the keyway just to keep that from, or the uh, key, I should say, keyway, just to keep that from sticking in place like it did. I had a just about jackhammer the thing out of there. Probably have to tap this in with a hammer. Slots over here out of your vision. I'd spit it around, but this thing's pretty tight with the uh, rubber in there. Boy, it's gonna be real tight. And so you can imagine how tight that was with rust. That'll work. Line up that key. Put some other seeds inside here, too. Oh, we'll do those set screws for sure. Those almost didn't come out either. I had to heat those up red hot to get them out. Two little. There's one, one goes in there. The other goes in the top there. So 90 degrees apart from each other. Two set screws. Just the fact that they didn't use any C's in here. You don't even need the set screws. I could have ran this thing for 20 years without them. Being as how stuck that was. Okay. This might need some persuasion. This, when I took this off, it was flush. That's about that. If anything, I went too, just a hair too far. I don't think this is overly critical. But of course, I also bashed up the end of this trying to get it off. So there's that. Put a blob of the off-road stuff in the keyhole there, keyway hole. Put a nice thick layer on the outside of this, keep moisture out of there. And uh, hopefully this thing will last me 20 years or better. Okay, here's the... Uh, crap on this thing. And there's the pulley. Let's put the set screws in first. Looks like they had some type of uh, Loctite on there or something. I'm gonna just go and wire wheel that off. So like a dummy, I went and lost the set screw as it caught the uh, wire wheel. Caught my finger actually and I dropped it. Went into another dimension, it's gone. So I just cut a bolt put a little uh, notch in it with the Dremel, and uh, that's gonna have to do. I'm gonna put anti-seize on this one just because if this thing gets stuck in here, it's gonna be hopeless trying to get it out with a screwdriver. So I'll just make sure it's snug. So on second thought, after that battery failure there with the GoPro, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, this is the stock. The stock one I'm gonna leave alone, and I'm just gonna put it in dry. Uh, just so it doesn't have a tendency to back out of there. This one here, I'm going to put a little off-road grease on it. Actually, a lot of off-road grease. Just so it doesn't end up jammed in there. Because I'll never get it out with that flat screwdriver. Okay, where's 
the hole. That's the way it is. Uh, sloppy engineering. three in the spring. Yeah. That's that. Alright, so this thing got all bashed up when we were trying to get it off. Nothing's ever simple, is it? Better than it was. It's pretty good now. Now I can at least tighten the bolts now. Didn't want to go forcing that thing on there and then warp the pulley. And you end up vibrations and belt wear and everything else. End result, it's gonna cost you more money, like most things. It's about that. Two six six O O one Stens replaces the O seven two three eight five zero zero made USA. Ain't that something? Don't see that anymore. The brake should hold that in place. This one I'm gonna do is just lift this thing up. Definitely too big, but let's see how it works. Yes. This thing back up. Just a little clip holds that together. Pretty simple. the cable routed the correct way we'll go ahead and uh, put the washer and a little e-clip on there on the end of a cable here it's on there a little sticky I think I need to shim the spring a little more. Yeah, it's all, things all worn out, so we'll deal with that another day. That's not a critical issue for me. All the major maintenance stuff is done. Off camera, I pulled the uh, idlers off of there, cut the little lip off the idler, and uh, just did a half ass uh, grease job on it. Pried the seal out. And uh, just put some uh, John Deere cornhead grease in there. Kicking the can down the road a little ways. You're better off just replacing the stupid thing, you know. 
but I didn't feel like waiting for more parts to come in. I gotta get this thing out of my way. So that's that. The little rubber pieces in there. The only thing left is the uh, dust shield there. Pop that on and fire up, see how it works. I don't wanna forget to put these, this nut back on this carriage bolt here. on before I put the chute on. It would have been a little easier. Live and learn. All right. Make sure I tightened everything. big load on this thing. Definitely don't want to go that tight. Got hot. Smells like a racetrack. Yeah, once you get water in there, I think it'll be fine. So this is the way I have it designed now. We don't want to run it dry. Boy, is that stiff. So you can probably see, that's about, that's about where I should have cut it. Yeah, I think it should be fine. We won't run it until uh, we get some snow going into it. Snow will keep it lubricated, I think. You can always spray some silicone in there too. I guess. Silicone spray around here somewhere, yeah. That's plenty of silicone there. See if she does a little better this time. She's noisy for sure. Well, I'm good with that for now. Lesson learned there. Definitely go shorter on the rubber. I didn't take a measurement. I just went off of memory, and I didn't really look at it that close. I knew it had to been a half inch, so I figured an inch would be better. <laughs> Bigger ain't always better, but whatever. What's going to happen is going to happen. It's, it's going to be better than it was. That's all that matters. So this thing needs a good cleaning. But other than that... She's ready for another winner. Thanks for watching. Hope that uh, was of some value. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one.